Okay, this is my Realms 7 game against Gullaxon, an international master rated 2400. He's in Norway's top 20. Um, from Norway, by the way, um, of course Magnus Carlsen in the top section of the London Classic, but also there's a guy called Hammer, who's literally uh, hammering everyone in the Fidia Open. He's, uh, he's one point clear at the moment, uh, after crushing Neil MacDonald um, yesterday. So anyway, I'm playing um, Galaxant, so d4, knight f6, and I was expecting the king's engine defense, and all my preparation went out of the window when he played the tango. Fortunately, I knew that uh, you can play knight f3 here to try and discourage e5 from black, and also you can try and stop the Nimzo engine transposition by playing a3 here. So d6, and I thought, well actually, yeah, he's got a kind of king's engine which he, he knows very well now by playing g6 but it's a tempo behind so the interesting thing here is after castles why didn't he just play e5 he actually just played rook e8 and it's a different strategy I think um, he's trying to provoke a natural move b4 which is actually I think inappropriate here because of e5 let's have a quick look at this e5 and now knight d4, I think black would be fine because of the weakened diagonal and pressure on e4 if I took. This would be a disaster. Um, so if I can't take on d4, then the knight, what does he play here? Just queen e7 and, and black's fine. So I avoided playing the natural b4. Instead, um, there's different imbalances created. Very interesting game after bishop g5, and apparently he didn't know this at all. I didn't know this at all. So bishop coming back to h4. I'm losing the dark square bishop now, but um, on the other hand, there's some dynamics going on, tactical dynamics. Uh, so knight takes g3. I decide rather controversially to capture away from the center with f takes g3. So I have some crude ideas going on here against f7. So um, he plays knight e5, I get rid of that knight because I think it's just too strong on e5, unchallenged by pawn on either side. And then I play bishop h5, apparently according to Rubika White's doing fine, maybe even a tiny advantage. Uh, but it's changing its mind as well sometimes, giving black a tiny advantage, it's on the brink, it doesn't really know how to assess this position. Uh, so rook f8, queen d2, and I have the idea now of knight d1 to e3 to g4. Um, so I was pleased with my position because I haven't got any bad pieces. Um, they're all working as a team. Uh, he plays c6, very nice move to try and get counterplay with queen b6s, um, queen d4, stuff like that. So I try and avoid the check, but maybe rook f3 is more accurate actually. Uh, so I don't end up with a horrible pin on the rook as in the game. So rook f1 f6 so knight d1 and now he plays queen b6 so if knight e3 queen d4 and that would be horrible for me I think in fact bishop d4 apparently is, is even stronger according to Rivka so here taking on d5 taking an f5 black would be better but I was more concerned about queen d4 I was thinking what do I play here um, if the queens come off I, I thought it would be like worse Apparently, though, bishop g4 in this position and white's okay. So anyway, in this position, I played bishop um, g4 straight, straight off the bat without playing knight e3. And he played f5, I took on e6. And now I played bishop takes f5. I don't mind losing the exchange. And we looked at this after the game, and he agreed that... Um, this would be okay for white after g4 there's enough compensation because the thing is if he takes knight takes I've got h4 and his king is starting to be kind of loose and this knight can maybe hop into e4 if he's not careful so he didn't want to go for that he played rook takes f5 and apparently I'm equal with the move I played which was knight e3 breaking that pin and getting a situation where I can aim for perpetual check now if he had played bishop d4, then simply I, I played check and king h1. And apparently even white's better after queen b2, knight f5. But if takes, 
actually here there's a mating sex not just perpetual off the check check this is interesting and now rook f7 I see so this is actually mating black so he's, he was, it was good for him to avoid that if I had managed to find that I thought I was just aiming for a perpetual there so apparently that's 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 cool so bishop g7 maybe that's one of the strongest moves he has um, so now I play knight f5 apparently better is is to play the check and then queen e6 actually he was showing actually a queen e7 so this this is interesting as well the idea of rook f7 but apparently equal on brief analysis so anyway bishop g7 knight f5 it's a long game I'm sorry this is a bit superficial but it's a 48 move game um, so I don't mind the exchange of queens in this ending because I thought my knight was was going to be better so uh, rook f8 I take the queens off and play g4 now if it takes the knight h6 so I thought I'd be okay there um, so he plays actually king h7 and now rook e1 as a threatening rook e7 so he stops and now I decide I'm going to try and break this bishop down I'm going to play b4 and c5 immediately so b4 tries to undermine the knight and now I'm getting a slight advantage with a bit of pressure and I was very happy with this outcome this endgame outcome I thought this was great but his counterplay on the h file uh, means that I think objectively the position is equal even with this attractive knight so rook b3 rook h2 I think it's equal he's got enough counterplay um, but on the way back home last night, I was regretting, uh, you know, not trying for a crude mate with you know the rook on e7 here. Um, but let's let's have a quick look at that. After rook h2, say I had gone for this, takes knight e3. Now, if he finds the wrong move, he will get mated with knight d5. Um, so he he did say he wanted to go for this pawn, but say he did try for this pawn, then we have knight d5 in fact this is not a forced mate because the bishop can move now to f6 so so that was an illusion so I'm I'm glad that Ruka says that this is not really uh, indicates it's not really winning for white anyway it's just, just better but he the stronger move here is just rook d2 and black is actually better because then knight d5 there's rook d4 and white is lost white's lost actually king moves rook takes um, c4 and d5 is loose and this is this is all over these these are two connected pass pawns this is starting to look nasty for white so I'm, I'm glad I avoided that I played actually what is recommended rib can move um, king f3 rook h1 and now I take on b7 he plays rook c1 and now I find a forced way to get rid of these two connected pass pawns with a check and now the only move in the position, and that's what um, Eric was, was saying as well. I think it's Eric, his first name, Eric Gallickson. So rook, rook h7. So I'm going to take on d6 now when he takes on c4. But he first slips in a check. So takes, then I check. I take that pawn. So I've got rid of his past pawns, two connected past pawns. And this rook ending is looking completely drawn. Of the king f2, I offer a draw. Um, actually, this was my, my third draw offer okay. <laughs> during this game. My record number of draw offers, I don't usually offer anyone a draw, but I think, um, you know, 2400 IM, I was, a, I was a bit, you know, out of my depth, I think. I'm only 2150. So, anyway, he actually accepted it here. So, King F2 he didn't try and grind me down here. I don't think there's anything to grind now. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a tense, you know, battle. A lot of dynamic. Uh, variations very dynamic pawn structure for both sides um, pressure on the f file um, knight rerouting was was critical I think for black position but this time the f5 made sure he was um, he was it was interesting I think he must have blundered at some point here because he had a small advantage here and it all went to pot maybe I don't know Bishop d4 doesn't look we we both thought that would be uncomfortable for black, you know, because of g4 and h4 later. 
but Ribka is saying to do that. I'm not really sure. So what he played was um, it was fine for white apparently. So this this is fine for white. Um, the knight outpost is 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 okay, and the rook counterplay is perhaps unavoidable. Um, so ganging up on this c4 pawn, but as long as I can get his d6 pawn, then it's an exchange of prisoners, as Nimzovic would say, and leading to drawn rook and pawn ending. So I was pleased to draw with a 2400 IM yesterday, Galaxon. So I'm having good tournament so far for my rating. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.